Hi again, uh, want to get back on real quick to get uh, Mr. Rick Sanborn. He is a vice president from Seacoast Commerce Bank and he's gonna be talking to us on part two update of the coronavirus update. And everybody wants to talk about this. This is the hottest subject on the street. Everyone's in freak out mode and excited mode to try and get through some of the, the banking situations to get some of the, the stimulus package funds that are going out to business owners to help keep everything moving forward. So without further jab, jab, jabbing on my part, Rick, thank you for coming on again today. How's it going? My pleasure. Things are going good. Always a little crazy. I was just watching the uh, have a running total here of money, and I guess we can stop this because they just ran out of money. It's all gone. Oh, Rick, that was my question number one. Uh, I didn't sleep last night because I was so worried that, <laughs> that I was going to miss out on this stimulus package. So that's question number one. Are yeah. we going to run out of money? We do actually have a, we get updates very frequently from the folks at the SBA and as of one o'clock, so about an hour and a half ago, about 10,000 loan applications have been approved for 3.2 billion. So roughly 10%. Yeah. It's not gone yet. It's going to take some time, but you know, so the, the flowing out. So the, the flow of this now is going from uh, the, the consumer, the business owners into cabbage, which is that, that link that's been flying around. Right. Now that's... That is not just our money. Not, I mean, the, the 3.2 billion is not what we've done. That is the whole system in the whole country. So, and again, that's not 10%, it's about 1% of the money allocated. It, um, so for every bank in the country so far, a little over 10,000 loans have been approved. Doesn't mean the money's in their account yet for 3.2 billion in approved allocations of the 350 billion. And when did the so, SBA start approving these loans today? Before. The system this morning. This morning. So, yeah, let, let's talk about the flow. Let's back up and say we know nothing about how the flow of this works. Right. Talk us through in real generic terms, A to B to C, and how these things are approved at the end. Right. Okay, so kind of backing up, we've talked about the program where people can apply for uh, one month's worth of their total payroll times two and a half to help bring employees back online. The basic genesis of the, comp of the, of the act is the same. Congress wants to give you money if you either keep employees on the payroll or you rehire people you may have let go. So that's pretty much well known at this point. Talk briefly about the application process. When things were not finalized until yesterday afternoon, there were preliminary applications, there were preliminary guidelines, but we actually got the final stuff yesterday afternoon. So the application process is very simple. It's a two page application with very little information required. In essence, you're putting in, you're, you're going to self-certify a lot of this information in order for the bank to approve you. So before I get into the actual application, let me talk about how you can apply for these loans. Right now, you have to apply through a bank that is already an SBA bank or an FDIC insured institution. Your fastest method is to go to an SBA bank and go to your current bank. You're going to find some challenges because there are some banks that are saying right now that we are only going to deal with existing customers. I know all the major banks, they've been on TV today, and they have said that they're going to start with their existing customers first, some of them with their existing loan customers, then they'll get to their existing deposit customers, then to non-customers. As a side note, Seacoast, we will take applications from anybody. It doesn't matter whether you bank with us or not, whether you have a loan or not, it does not matter. But for the major banks, you have to be a customer to apply. For the other community banks in the country, I, don't, I can't tell you if they're doing it or not. I have heard from a lot of friends today. Some are trying to do it. Some are asking for us to do it. It's kind of hit and miss. But you should talk to your bank first. If not, all applications can, some, can come through our website, through our portal. So two processes, one of them is a paper process, which is not what we do, but I wanna talk about that because a lot of banks are using this paper process. There's an application which you can get online, go to treasury.gov or sba.gov, right on their front page, it'll talk about coronavirus financing options. You click on that, you can download borrower instructions and the borrower application. Again, it's two pages. And really it's about a quarter of one page of information, you know, your name, your address, your phone number. And then it is, are you gonna, you need to certify that you've been in, in business since February 15th of this year. You need to certify that you have less than 500 employees. And then you need to certify what your average monthly payroll amount is. Then there are some general questions. Are you a criminal? 
you know, all the normal disclosures, it's just check boxes. You go through that. The government says it'll take you eight minutes to fill out the application. You can do it in less than eight minutes. So once that application is complete, what you're going to need in general to apply for documentation is you need to be able to provide support for the payroll number. We talked about how the payroll calculation works. Take your 2019 total payroll spend, and that payroll spend includes, and I'm going to read it here just so I get it right, salaries, wages, let me get to the right page here. This is right off the SBA guidelines. Payroll consists of compensation to employees from salaries, wages, commission, similar compensation, cash tips, vacation, parental, family, medical, and sick leave expense, payments for the provision of employee benefits, group health coverage, retirement payments, state and local taxes, not federal, state and local taxes. So you figure out that total spend for all of 2019. Divide it by 12, that is your monthly average payroll. You can apply for two and a half times that amount. Now, as far as the documentation, the bank is going to ask you for, prove it. How did you come up with that number? And it could be your own internal p &L. It could be a, you know, a, an ADP payroll register. It could be a tax document. Whatever you can come up with to support it is going to be very important because as the bank, our underwriting part of this process is recalculating your number. That just is, so, go ahead, Matt. I was just going to say the, the tax document that we're providing is the Form 941, just to provide clarity for everybody. Form 941. Yep. Please finish. Sorry for interrupting. No, please do, because it's good for folks that are in business that are going through this process to understand what you're, what you're working on. So once you get the application done, you put down what the dollar amount of your monthly average payroll spend is times two and a half. You answer the questions. That's going to be given to the bank along with that supporting document, whether it's a 941 or a payroll register or whatever you have. From the bank's point of view, we are basically looking at the form to make sure it was filled out correctly. We get to rely on what you've put down. We are, I mean, for us anyway, we are not going to go back and try to validate or certify that the information is correct, you, the borrower, are signing an authorization and a certification that all the information is correct. We then take that information. There is an application form that the lender needs to fill out. It's the lender application. It's all behind the scenes. We fill it out. We submit all that information through, through an electronic portal called eTran. That is our electronic link into the SBA program. We approve it. We submit the information in, we get back what's called an authorization number, sometimes called a PLP number. That means once that's been done, your loan is for us, in essence, approved. Then loan documents can be prepared, you sign those, and then the money gets dispersed. Let's talk a bit about timing. You get the application in, in reality, we should be able to go through on a manual process and approve that loan in less than an hour and get the response back from the SBA to get that PLP number. I have to say the PLP system is overloaded. I mean, there are a lot of requests going in and it is apt to be very slow. So there needs to be some patience there. Again, we are putting over 10 times the annual volume of loan requests into a system in a few weeks, in a few days, to a few weeks, but it's working. As of 1, 1 p.m. today, there's been over 10,000 loans approved for 3.2 billion, so the process is working. So does that application process make sense? Yeah, it absolutely does. Uh, and we're, we're going through it uh, with you as well. So I know Brad did it today too. Talk about if, you know, this also gives me anxiety to know that already 10% of the money has gone out. 1%. Talk about, 1%. Okay, good. One's way better than 10. So, yes. but talk about what happens. You know, there's, I saw some uh, people were talking, you know, there's 30 million small businesses. There's 350 billion. That's about $11,000 per small business. What's going to happen if the money runs out? Yeah, I can tell you the average as of the first um, report I got this morning went about, um, I don't know, about a billion dollars had gone out. The average loan size is 373,000. Wow. So you multiply that times the businesses, it's way more than 350 billion. Yeah. 
Secretary Mnuchin in his press conference yesterday said, look, we understand the money's gonna run out. We don't know when. We, we believe it's gonna be in three or four weeks. But he said that they will go back to Congress and try to get more money for the program. If you think about it, this was unanimously approved by the Senate. This is an important program. This is getting money back to small businesses to hire people. They're already talking about stimulus bill four. So my belief is they'll be able to get money to continue this program if they fall short on their estimates. I wanted to talk about the online process, which is a little different from the paper process I just talked about. Yeah, please do. So Matthew, you're going through this now. So a lot of banks have a paper process, fill out an app, bring in the documentation. We have decided to partner with the largest online business lending portal called Cabbage. And the reason we did that is the sheer volume of requests that we're getting, we just could not handle them quick enough on a personal paper basis. So on our website, there's a link to apply here for the loan. It goes out to Cabbage and Cabbage has built this whole backend system to be able to go through this SBA PPP process. You're basically doing everything online. You and as a reminder, as a reminder to everyone out there, this is just specific to Seacoast. Correct. Right? This is not like for the SBA thing altogether. So I don't want people to be going to Cabbage and say, you know, that show that they put together, I don't understand what they're talking about. This is only for Seacoast customers. Well, but there are some banks that are also doing, created their own online portals too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to be honest, yeah, Cabbage is doing this for other banks as well. We are not the only bank using Cabbage. And I do believe you can actually go straight to Cabbage and apply for this loan as well. We're trying to get as many access points to small businesses as possible. We're not trying to corner the market and, and cover it off. But the way the process works is you go into Cabbage, you fill out the application online. There will be verifications of bank accounts. They need to verify who you are as part of the BSA, AML, or Bank Secrecy Act laws. So there will be some verifications. You need to be able to verify your bank account information. That's where some of this is getting tripped up. You got to give in your bank login and password information. They need to be able to get in like you're going into Quicken and verify that information. And then once you get the information in, you will then upload those tax documents or those payroll verification documents. Their systems will go through the eTran approval. And then once you are approved, they're saying today it's going to be roughly three to four days to get the money into your account. So the process for us is working. We've had close to a thousand people that have wanted to apply. They are now going through this cabbage process through us. And I have been getting emails from folks that yes, it's working. Yes, they've been approved. Some aren't, but we are getting that it is working. All right. I'm going to ask a personal question because we're going through it. And do you upload the documents before you get approved or is that post getting approved? That is part of the approval process. So first you're putting in your information about your entity, about the ownership, you're answering the questions. And then I believe, and I, unfortunately I have actually not applied, so I can't go in and see the actual screens. I'm trying to get people to send me screenshots. Uh, we just did, we signed the agreement last night on this. We, we sure. link online on our website last night. So we haven't even got the documentation to show people. I mean, this is how fast it's going. But my understanding is, you put the information in, it'll qualify you as an eligible business, and then you are going to have to upload that payroll information. And that's, the, that's what the three to, three to four day process is, is they need to validate that information and then cut the check, and they will send it directly into your account. Why was, uh, and, and not just with you, I mean, this was kind of like crammed down everybody's throat in about a week, right? Because the president signed it, well, you, you were on last week and the president had just signed it, and today, here seven day, almost seven days later, exactly seven days later, we're talking about getting this money out. Talk about just the craziness of the process. I know last night late, like originally it was going to be, if you did switch it to a loan or it stayed alone, not switch, but if it stayed alone, it was a half percent. Now it's 1%. Talk right. about all the things that happened kind of at the 11th hour. Uh, you want to get into the sausage making, huh? <laughs> not to, well, just as much, but just because I, I know everybody's been working on this very hard for seven days to get everybody the money and it just feels so stressful for us, yeah. but also it's stressful for you guys too. Well, I think there was a concerted effort between industry bankers as well as the U S treasury and the SBA to do everything we could move heaven and earth to get a system up and running so that we could get money to small businesses. You're absolutely, absolutely right. This was so rushed. It's insane. A program like this would normally take a year to implement. 
not a week. Right, rightfully so. The industry did push back a little bit, the banking industry. Yeah. And I thought they had a valid point. I read an article this morning. Uh, I think it was on, uh, I can't remember what qualified goods article it was. It was a good company. But the point of it was, you know, the banking industry is pushing back. So we don't have enough guidelines. You're asking us to do this for free. Uh, just all the things that are just, that yeah. make sense, right? right? And because you get somebody else standing up there on stage and they got the spotlight on them. They're like, oh, it'll be easy. You just walk into your bank and you apply and you walk out with money. And, and the banking industry is like, no, 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 that's not how that works. You could be the secretary of the treasury, Brad. Yeah, exactly. But you guys have, 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 at least you guys being the industry as a whole, has brought a little bit of reality to this, yeah. saying yeah. that's not how it's really going to work in real life. And so talk a little bit about that from your perspective and kind of some of the craziness you were seeing, but yet some of the fact checking and the, and right. the reality checks that were coming in. Yeah, we agreed 100% as an industry with the intent of the program. We got to find a way to get money to people quickly. And going through the banking system really was the fastest way to do it. And the intent was figure out how to get money to people quickly. Where the breakdown starts is we as bankers have to think about risk. We have to think about, we can, we can cut a check today and give somebody money. Okay, but how are we going to collect it? And then what happens if they don't pay us back? Who, who's liable for that? If the government being the treasury and SBA want us to just get money out as quickly as possible, that's fine but there's certain conditions under which we can't be held responsible. Let me just give you an example of why we also had to push back on this. And I will tell you up until two days ago, we were not gonna do the program once we got the original guidance from Treasury. But here's the reason why. I don't know how much we're gonna do in this loan program. It could be, and we figured if we did, you know, a thousand clients at a hundred thousand, it could be a hundred million dollars we could send out. The bank is a total, we have 132 million in capital. That's our total equity base. What would happen if Treasury said, you didn't do something right and the guarantee on all those loans is invalid and we have to eat those loans and they go bad? It would kill the bank, we would go out of business. So that's, that was just one aspect of it. Uh, for me, that was the biggest liability is, should we be held responsible if you are telling us, get this money out with limited information and limited due diligence? said, we can cut the check, but I don't want to be held responsible and potentially crater the bank if mistakes are made, which are mistakes out of our question, out of our ability. So that's where there had to be this, okay, let's pause for a second, discussions between industry and the regulators saying, Treasury specifically, look, we'll do this, but we need to get some guidance. I mean, every bank pushed back. Every bank at one point about three days ago was like, we're not doing this loan program because of these risk, these risk issues. How am I going to handle defaults on loans? You want me to rely on a simple two-page form that you, you're saying the borrower is going to certify it's all true and correct. Hey, that's great, but that's not the way the SBA program works. When a loan goes bad, we know we have to prove we did everything right, and there is no proving if you do nothing. So that's where, the, I mean, really in the last 48 hours, people have been in a room nonstop figuring out how we're going to get around this, and the, and the end result, honestly, is it's okay. I mean, the, the, the half a percent versus 1%, that's really not a big deal because that's more of a cost of funding to be able to fund these loans. It, to me, it was more about the liability. Can we come together and figure out if you want us to give somebody a loan on basically a piece of paper on a, on a signature on a page based upon them just telling me I'm certifying all the information's correct, that's fine, but I can't be held responsible. So Treasury and SBA did agree that we would be held harmless if we, have, if we rely on the certification that the borrower is telling us that all the information they provided is true and accurate. So that's how we're able to now act so quickly is because we've been given that hold harmless. Talk a little bit about, there's a, also an EIDL loan. Are you familiar right. with this? And it's like a $10,000 grant. So some people have already applied for that through a separate program. You did, Brad. And so talk about how that works in conjunction with this um, this PPP program. Right. The EIDL program or the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, we just call it the disaster loan. That is a standard program that the SBA has. It's always been in existence. It's available when there is a, a disaster, uh, an earthquake, a hurricane, a flood. The SBA gets appropriated money during disaster times to be able to provide assistance to small businesses. That program is geared to helping businesses get back on their feet replenish working capital, repair things that may have been damaged during a disaster. 
Stimulus One allocated about $8 billion to the SBA for this EID, EIDL program. It's not related to payroll. It's really related to economic injury to the business as a result of an event. So yes, folks can apply for this EIDL program or disaster program, and they can get funds to fix problems. Part of the EIDL program, because it takes a few weeks to get that money, is you can apply for a quick grant of the $10,000. So that's under the EIDL program, but within three days, we want to get you 10 grand. So folks can apply for that. What Treasury is saying is you can't apply for that and a PPP loan for the same purpose. So if you're applying for an EIDL loan or and you get a quick grant and you're using it to pay payroll or rent or utilities, that's fine, but you can't also do that under the PPP program. So here's how the solution is. You may already have a quick grant, you may already have an EIDL loan, that's fine. You can still apply for a PPP loan, but as part of whatever you qualify for, you have to reduce that amount by whatever amount of EIDL loan you already have, the part that's attributable to payroll. Yeah. So you that... can't double dip essentially. Right. Yeah, you can't yeah. double dip. Which makes sense. Now, what's important is if you are, if you do have one of those EIDL loans and you're applying for a PPP loan, part of the proceeds should be used to pay off that EIDL loan. Here's the reason why. Disaster relief loans are not forgivable. PPP loans are. So there may be the ability for you to pay it off, use it for payroll, and get that loan forgiven as part of the PPP program. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what about, let's talk a little bit, pivot a little bit, talk about somebody who's a one, one person property manager. Yep. And I got this question I asked, I, I told people on LinkedIn that we were going to be on again. And this is one of the questions I had. How, how does one who's a sole proprietor or a sole PM who doesn't have any employees and maybe losing a lot of income personally through their business, can the owner get anything and can the 1099 employees that work for them get anything themselves? Absolutely. Um, sole proprietors can apply for a PPP loan and you're right, they don't get a salary. The way that the regulations work is if you're a sole proprietor, your net income for 2019 is considered your gross wages for the year. Gotcha. Example is I have a brother who's a general contractor. Um, he's a sole proprietor. It's not a corporation or anything. He's a sole prop and he has two employees that he brings on and he 1099 pays them. So what I told him is you take your schedule C, your sole prop net income from last year. That is your payroll personally. Add in the money you paid under the 1099 to your two other employees. Together, that is now your gross income for the year divided by 12 times two and a half that is your loan amount. Excellent. And then um, any other questions, Brad, before I pivot into the, um, that question about the charity we were going to talk about? Yeah, go ahead. Um, really so, there's, a, there's not so, much I can really ask further. Just, I'm always thinking about it in the back of my head, like, are, did we get to that point? Because I, I put my team on it all day. I don't know if they got through yet. I'm panicking. I need to go make a phone call but I'm sure like everybody else, they need this information, but they want to know. If I know as soon it. as this, as soon as this thing's over, like I'm, I've got like this list growing oh. list of things I Sorry, need to do. I declined. <laughs> no. So we had a, uh, someone else reach out on LinkedIn and said that, that he was a board member on a charity and they had applied for a PPP loan through bank of America, but they've never taken a loan or a line of credit out through bank of America. Yeah. And he was curious how they're going to prioritize customers based on their needs and they use an Amex instead of borrowing money. And are, you talked a little bit about this. So talk, please talk some more. Is it truly everyone just going to be focused on existing race relationships and those with credit on relationships first? Yeah. Um, yeah. Brian Winningham was on CNBC this morning and he did go through that where he said our number one priority, our first priority is going to be our existing loan customers, then our existing depository customers and then non-customers. Uh, JP Morgan sent a letter out to all their clients yesterday, basically saying the same thing, that they are only going to apply these loans for existing customers. I don't think they designated whether it was loan or deposit, but only existing customers. And honestly, most banks that I hear from, it's the same thing. The, the volume is overwhelming. 
they're just going to deal with existing customers. Well, and part of that's the know your customer stuff, right? Like there's a bunch of hoops that the government set up when somebody creates an account with you or creates some sort of relationship with you that you have to jump through first. So it makes sense to go through all the people you already know right. first and then get to, plus they're your customers, right? You need to take care of them and you have all these loans. You don't want them to go out of business uh, in the meantime. So totally yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Tell me your, tell me your feeling of, of how are you guys feeling as a bank going through this? Are you now feeling that, okay, the fed's going to take care of you or are you guys nervous as all get out that something's going to tweak and you know, you get left holding the bag. You know, we're okay. And because of our partnership with cabbage, in essence, we don't end up with the loans on our books. Cabbage has a facility whereby we put them through their system. Cabbage approves them, I and the bank's really out of it. Cabbage does the processing. Cabbage does the approval. Cabbage will do the funding and the servicing after. So it takes the liability off of us. And we decided to go that route for two reasons. One of them, as I said, we couldn't handle the volume of requests we had. Number one, you know, we like I said we do 25 to 30 loans a month. Cabbage does. 10,000 a month. So they have the system to be able to handle it. But just from a pure funding standpoint, credit standpoint, credit risk and liability, we now don't have that liability. I realize the, you know, the downside is we are moving our clients into this online system and we have nothing to do with it. But to us, it was more important to have a system where our folks could get the money the fastest. And it really was not going to be us doing it. So from a, a liability or risk standpoint, we don't have that. We're up, and that's why we're open to doing it for anybody, not just clients, because we don't have to hold those loans on our books. Yeah, I think that's important for people to know that if they don't have a banking relationship, and most everybody does, but that they can go straight to either your website or to Cabbage, and Cabbage is spelled with a K, uh, to their website and apply for these loans. Um, talk, what, do we, what else are we missing? I, I feel like this has been super helpful, gotten me back up to speed. Now I have this like growing list of things I need to do as soon as we get off. What, what else are we missing? Um, oh, I know one question I have. So hold on. How do I initiate? Remember the SBA is also going to pay six months worth of my SBA loans. Right. And I'm not sure how I initiate that to get started. Yeah. So part of a stimulus bill is number one, if you have an existing SBA loan, the government's going to make their, your payments for you. Now that was supposed to start April 1st. I can tell you what we've done at Seacoast. We have about 1200 clients that have SBA loans. We instantly stopped their direct automatic payments and we've held any checks that have come in. We send forms to the SBA to get the payments made on your behalf. So that's what each bank is supposed to do. Submit information to the SBA on what your normal principal and interest payments are. They will get that money sent over to us. We are then going back to our existing clients. Hey, we got your payment. Do you want the money back? Do you want us to apply it later? We have various options, but it's supposed to happen completely automatic where we send information to the SBA. They send payments to us to make sure those payments are covered. It's and also important to note out in the PPP loan, your payments are going to be covered for the first six months for that loan as well. Oh, wow. And, and, and honestly, the SBA money ought to not run out here because they knew how much money they were going to do, right? right? So yeah. it's not like I'm going to get five months of payments or four months of payments and they're like, oh, sorry, we're out of money. No, they knew it was about $17 billion was the allocation. It was about 250,000 small business loans in the system for about $80 billion. They could calculate out the payments and they did allocate for that in the bill. I know, I know this is not true, but I feel like my payments are 1 billion of that 17 billion, but... <laughs> but anyways, well, uh, this has been awesome. Brad, any last thoughts? No, I appreciate you coming on again, Rick. You guys can hear me okay still? I had to get off my headphones. Yeah, thanks again for coming back on. Uh, this has been a tremendous help because everything is changing by the minute. We needed to hear an update from you. Uh, we may have you back on again next week if you would have us uh, because it might all change again, but this has been so helpful to, to get you back on and get the right information out there. Uh, yeah. One comment. Patience. We, we've talked about 10 times the annual volume in a few days. Systems are slow. Systems are crashing. It is happening. Be diligent. Continue to try. If for some reason you can't get through or you're getting blocked out, this bubble will get through. But everyone, please have some patience as we work through some of the technology and ecology issues. 
patience is one of those things you appreciate in other people, but you don't want in yourself. So when that money hits my account, I will be super patient with everything else. But you, y'all have done a great job. Allison's done an awesome job helping us, keeping us uh, in the loop. So thanks so much for showing up again. This is uh, this has been some amazing material. And I mean, I, last time you're on, it, you crushed it. And this time, I think uh, I appreciate you coming on and filling us in. Well, thanks, guys. More than happy to do it anytime. Thanks, Rick. Take thanks, care. Rick. See ya.